Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Justin with AmericanMuscle.com. Now, with the arrival of this guy right here, the 2024 Mustang, obviously a lot of fans were very excited because it's a new car. Definitely worth being excited about, right? Well, not so fast. There's a lot of people out there who are arguing that this new generation, the S650, really isn't that much different from the previous generation, the S550. Well, as you can see, we happen to have both cars with us here today to take a look at some of these new changes for the S650 and decide just how big or small these changes really are. Let's go. Now, before we start breaking down individual areas of these two cars, let's talk quick tail of the tape here because that is a good indication to see that these two generations are a lot closer than you might think. In fact, wheelbase identical between the two, 107 inches. Also identical overall width, 81.9 inches between the S550 and S650. Length is a little bit different. S650 is a bit longer, 189.4 inches compared to 188.5 for the S550. Height's a little bit different as well. S550 is a little shorter at 54.3 inches compared to the S650, which is coming in at 55 inches even. Last but not least, weight, obviously a bit controversial as the S650 is weighing in at 3,827 pounds for our base manual GT, whereas the S550 is coming in about 100 pounds less at 3,730 pounds. All right, guys, first things first, let's start off with the most changed part of the car here, and that, of course, is front end. Let's break down the two side by side. And as you can see, in my eyes, I kind of think the S550, at least the 2018 Plus, has a slightly more aggressive front end. Now, starting with the 2018 that we have here today, as you can see, we have the more traditional tri-bar gills with the headlight there and the projector. Now that is gone here for the S650. Now your tri bar is up top there and you have kind of this three LED projector look there, which is certainly more modern. I don't know if it's more aggressive. Uh, one thing that I really like about the S550, at least the 2018 and newer from this angle, you really get that kind of pissed off look, right? That's something I always dug about the 2018 plus cars. Moving over to this side, yeah, you get it a little bit, but I think the big mouth of the new grill of the S650 kind of cancels that out a little bit. Speaking of grill, as you can see, we get that piano gloss black thing happening. I would say you still have the same overall shape uh, between this one and the S550, but the added black down low just appears that this grill is massive. Uh, when in fact, the grill itself, at least the opening, really isn't that different between the two cars. Now, one thing that is different here, and one thing that I noticed with all my buddies is that, man, there's no fog lights anymore on these cars. You know, with the S550, you got them kind of tucked in there with the turn signals. Now with the S650, no fog lights anywhere. Finally, guys, let's talk hood because that is also a big change as well. Looking at the car side by side, you really see the length of the 650 hood seems more pronounced compared to that of the S550. It seems a bit shorter. Obviously, we have the twin vents working there. The one massive heat extractor there on the S650, which is functional on both cars here, of course. They are going to allow heat to escape, but I don't know. Which one do you guys like better? Let us know below. All right, so while up front here, guys, we'd be remiss not to talk about some of the changes to the power plant for the basic GT here, uh, both small and big. Now, with the S650, of course, we usher in the fourth generation of the five liter Coyote, now making 480 horsepower, 415 pound-feet of torque, thanks to not one, but two throttle bodies and twin air boxes. Uh, certainly a different design here, of course, from the tried and true Gen 3 Coyote found in our 2019 GT. Uh, this is really the car that ushered in that big compression bump, 12 to one in this thing, making 460 horsepower, 420 pound feet of torque. Now I do want to point out guys, I always felt that the Gen 3 here kind of overperformed for what those crank numbers were. That really hasn't been our experience so far with the S650. In fact, uh, a lot of dynos out there, including ours, showed power numbers were down uh, compared to what we might have expected 
did given the bump and crank horsepower. Now, one thing that is different, of course, with these two engines, at least at this time, is the tunability. Obviously, with the Gen 3, you can tune these things, add basically whatever power adder you'd like. Not the case here with the fourth gen Coyote. Um, you know, where there's a will, there's a way, and knowing the aftermarket, there will be a tune for these things very, very soon. So, uh, transmission-wise, again, not really much has changed from the S550 to the 650. Your manual is still the MT82 and the standard GT, uh, and your automatic is still the 10R80 auto. Uh, in the automatic equipped GTs. One big thing that is different, however, here between these two gens, hood struts. Now, one area in particular where I feel like these two cars really haven't changed from generation to generation is the side profile. Let me spin you guys around here and give you a better view of what I'm talking about. From the side, these two cars, I think, are extremely similar, not only in shape, but overall dimension. Now, there are some slight changes with these two cars on the rear corner. You can kind of see this one has a little bit more detail, whereas the S650 loses that little line in favor of a slightly larger rear haunch. Uh, Ford says that's to give the car a more muscular look overall. Other minor changes here on the side include, yes, I know it's silly, but you got a different 5.0 badge compared to our S550, which is all in chrome there. Of course, you can change that with a blackout package, but another notable change for the S650 is even with the base brakes, if you guys can really see that, They've given them some detail here with the lettering, the Brembo logo and all that stuff. So even though they're both four pistons, these guys look very much like a base brake, right? Whereas the S650, even though you're not getting the performance pack brakes, you are getting a pretty noticeable increase in appearance. Outside of the front, I'd say the rear end is probably the second biggest change from generation to generation. Really couldn't be any more different in my opinion here, guys. Um, you know, with the S550, of course, we had the iconic tri bars done a little bit differently, a little bit more of an angle. Well, with the S650, they've kind of implemented this really radical wedge design here with the deck lid and then incorporated the taillights into that. Now, I know some of you guys are gonna be like, oh, it's Camaro, it's Camaro. Well, do your homework, go ahead and Google search a 67 through 68 Mustang for me. And once you do, you'll notice that this kind of inverted tail light design is certainly not new to the rear of a Mustang, but that's neither here nor there. What is new, at least for the S650, is a non deck lid panel for the first time, gosh, I would say stock since the 2013, 14 GTs that had that piano black look going on. Um, you know, this is something I've gotten very accustomed to with the later S197s, of course, S550s, having that consistent black all the way across. Well, as you can see now, a lot different here with the S650. Now, moving down a little bit more, guys, you'll notice exhaust is a lot different as well. Both base GTs, what you're looking at here. However, the S650, they went back to a single shooter exhaust here for a non-active car, which I think is a little weird. I do really like the beefier rear valance. I think it adds some more muscle to the rear of the car. However, with this base GT, you still got the quads, which I just think looks awesome even with the non-active car. So I will say from the back, the S550 just looks a lot beefier. Um, I don't know if it's just the way I'm seeing it now compared to the S650, which looks a little bit leaner, a little bit wider from the rear. One more area to talk about. Let's hop in these things and take a look. Of course, we have to talk about the changes to the interior. And I would say this is probably the most polarizing part of the changes. And that, of course, is the big switch to a tech-heavy interior or cockpit here with the new S650. Case in point, now you're getting screens everywhere. Now, this is still a base car, so you're still getting a relatively pleasant experience. Certainly feels a lot nicer than the S550 base cars we'll show you in a minute. Very, very little physical touch points here with the S650. One thing I really do dig though is the new steering wheel. I like the flat bottom design. Really like these pads here at 10 and two. Just feels a lot nicer in the hands to drive. They obviously lowered the vents a little bit here. Shifter is directly from an S550. There is zero changes to that whatsoever. And honestly, I'm not a huge fan of the parking button being right there. It just kind of looks weird to me. But outside of that, you'll notice no double bubble. With the addition of the screens here, Ford has ditched that iconic design for something a little sleeker and basically something to play home to these twin tablets. But let's head over to the S550 now and check out that car.
All right, guys, stepping into the interior here of the S550 GT, and I will say right off the bat, experience for experience, the S650 just blows this car out of the water. Much more premium feel to it for essentially the same price point, base GT to base GT. Putting aside your personal feelings about those screens, believe me, I hear you. I have a lot of feelings about them and not many of those feelings are positive. Let's take a quicker look here at the 650. You guys know the deal by now, right? Still got the analog gauges, tiny little screen in the middle. My S550 GT, I have the all digital dash, which I like. I think that's a good kind of marrying of the new tech with some of the old tech, meaning your analog buttons and push points. Uh, speaking of screens, maybe the smallest screen ever on a modern Mustang here, but as you can see, unlike the S650, your gauges or your vents rather are still up top. We're still holding on to that double bubble dash, which is the iconic Mustang look. Uh, that does go away in the S650 with those screens. Uh, we showed you the shifter. Well, here it is again, as you can see, identical to that of the S650. And then, hey, look at this, your drift brake, <laughs> the OG drift brake, right? None of that fancy electronic stuff. Uh, I like the physical emergency brake, call me old school. Those new S650 seats, really, really big fans of those. Uh, probably some of the most comfortable base seats I've ever sat in. These aren't terrible, but I will say big time improvement over there for the new generation Mustangs. Just breaking down the individual components from seat feel, steering wheel, overall layout, touch points, things like that, I'd have to give the nod to the S650. All right, guys, so there you have it. What's the verdict? I know my answer, but we want to hear from you. What do you guys think? Is this enough to be a new generation Mustang? Drop us a comment and let us know. In the meantime, I'm Justin. Thanks for watching. And remember, for all things Mustang, keep it right here at AmericanMuscle.com.